Hey guys, I'm Buck Weezer. We're putting the do into do it yourself and uh, welcome to another Buck Small Engine DIY video on YouTube. The time has come to take apart this Briggs and Stratton V Twin from 1998 and take a look at the internal damage. You want to join me for this? Now, you might recall uh, just uh, not that long ago, I did a video on diagnosing a problem with this where it was bogging down under uh, at full throttle, bogging down. It's intolerable and uh, belongs to a buddy of mine. He's got a 1999 Scott's lawn tractor. And long story short, we determined it was only running on one cylinder due to mechanical damage inside the engine. So, uh, this is it. I removed it from the machine, and long, what I did for my friend is I had another one of these engines that I put in his tractor. A couple of years newer, and it's running great right now, and the tractor's back with him, and this one's sitting here ready for us to tear apart. Now, I had to take some of the components off of this engine and use on the other one, including the one-cylinder head. Now, this was the one that was firing because you can see it's piston here is moving in and out uh, I took the intake manifold and the carburetor um, took the starter also the muffler so some of the components from this engine are still being used on that tractor just swap them over to the other engine keep our fingers crossed so far it's working great so I wanted to open this up I drained most of the oil already I don't know if I'm going to keep this engine to rebuild it, or maybe I'll just take some parts off of it. One of the cylinder heads also I swapped over to the other, other engine. But to open it up, it's probably going to be a mess because it had a significant oil leak. I don't know if the oil leak was from the sump gasket or if there was a, there's a crack somewhere from when the connecting rod broke which is what I assume happened inside um, so yes yeah, let's let's see what we can do here I have a an assortment of half inch drive tools right there and uh, I think that's all we're gonna need to get started on this crack these loose and then we'll uh, zip them out How many are there? A dozen? Fifteen? I'm not counting. Hey, how do you like my homemade engine stand? It's really kind of a thick walled plastic bucket. And I drilled a one inch hole right down the middle. Works pretty good for, you know, lawn tractor engines. Have we gone all the way around yet? I think we have. So, let's see if we can get these off. Might need to get the uh, engine up a little higher. Let me find a block of wood. I don't know, this will do it. That might help. Nope, still don't have enough room. There we go.
All right. I think I got all of them. And now I want to see if I can crack it open. I want to see if I can crack it open without turning it upside down. I want to see in the bottom of the pan everything without it falling the other way. Uh, I'm not sure the best way to break it loose. Maybe a rubber mallet or something can start it for me. Let me see what I can let me see what I can accomplish and we'll come right back. Forgot this bolt. That should help. It's not going to be as easy as I hoped. Might just have to lay it on its side and work on it a little bit. It's kind of like the weight of the majority of the engine is holding it together. So I might have to turn it on its side and uh, work it free that way. That didn't take long. It's on its side here. It's coming apart and uh, the parts are already falling out. Oh yeah. I'm also making a mess with spilling oil all over the place. I get a rag. <sighs> Look familiar? Broken connecting rod. Here's the pieces. Yep. There's more to pieces. We weren't wrong, were we? This guy's right here. Yeah, that's a real shame. I don't know why. I mean, I guess after 22 years, 23 years, it doesn't really owe us anything. I'm gonna have to take these. Okay, so there's a look inside our pan. Lots of small little pieces that were just sitting down in there. Oil pump has a screen on it, which is super helpful. Preventing further damage. Uh, yeah, a lot of broken pieces. Connecting rod exactly as we had predicted would be the case. Yeah. It's a shame. I'm trying to look at the block to see if there's any obvious cracks. It was leaking oil a lot. I don't know if that was because there's a crack somewhere or just the sump gasket. And the sump gaskets are famous on these for, for uh, leaking. And if there's no obvious cracks, then perhaps the hope remains that I might be able to, uh, you know, get a new connecting rod and put this guy back together for service in a different setting. I don't know, I don't know if it's worth it. Maybe I just need to use this for uh, parts, take the ignition coils off, uh, whatever. So let's turn this. Yeah, so there's no connecting rod back there. And this is our, this is the cylinder that where it's not moving and I don't actually see the end of it in there. So I can't get a view, pull off the, that. Yeah, so that's it. We weren't wrong. And uh, it was fun ripping it open to confirm our conclusion. These are generally very good engines. Hey, we got 22, 23 years out of it. And uh, hopefully my buddy won't come back with any complaints about the 2003 engine that we swapped it out for. 
All right, that's it. Love to hear your thoughts, your comments, your questions. I generally like these engines very much. Uh, I'll put a link uh, at the end here for the diagnosis video that I had shared previously if you haven't seen it. And I'll also link to another video where I actually do a partial rebuild on one of these engines for the very same problem, a broken connecting rod. I call it uh, DIY engine rebuild. That's it for now, guys. I appreciate you watching. Hope you have a great day, and I look forward to seeing you on our next video. Bye-bye.